Now, Lindsay, firefighters say it has been a tough, tough day, mainly because of what you see in front of the camera there, brush and weeds that have been absolutely scorched. Have a look for yourself. We're not talking about one bullet hole or 10 for that matter, but three dozen of them all in this house across the street from the shootout. Let me walk you through it. First of all, the driver came barreling through this park while there were kids there then ran smack dab into this truck, causing it to go on its side. At five o'clock, I was squinting because we were facing the sun. The sun was getting into my eyes. Nowadays, I'm squinting because the snow is flying right towards us. Have a look. The tape is still up. Been here since 10 in the morning. We also have the barricades, so you cannot get in here and you cannot get out as you pan down the street. Imagine the reaction among golfers when they come over this bluff, and this is what they see, a murder investigation in the middle of one of Phoenix's most prestigious golf courses. The flames swept through here so much so that a symbol of the desert, this saguaro, is no more. The takeaway here is sadness. I mean, this memorial is for a 14 year old boy one who will never know the impact that he truly left in this neighborhood <laughs> absolute shock and incredible sorrow two of the emotions overwhelming those who knew and loved Antonio Arce the most Antonio didn't deserve all this he was too young to waste a life like this Today, loved ones prayed, <laughs> they grieved, and they marched. <laughs> Hundreds of people, in fact, traced the very route that Antonio took before being killed. <laughs> A powerful procession ending at the precise spot where he died. <laughs> Antonio's death thrusting so many people into chaos, including a man whose truck police believe Antonio burglarized on the afternoon that he died. After the shooting, this man says police seized his truck. At once, he has not only had to deal with raw emotion of this case in his neighborhood, but the financial fallout from not having a truck for work. We're having a yard sale right now so we can make money. We can't go sell it. We can't go nowhere because we don't have the vehicle to do it. Antonio! Friends insist Antonio never meant anyone harm. The 14-year-old leaves behind a grieving family and plenty of growing questions. It looks like a scene out of a Hollywood blockbuster. Yet in May 2018, it happened here in Phoenix. Gas station hostages fighting back and subduing their attacker before making a dramatic escape. Hey, we've got a robbery or something going on at Grant and 19th Avenue Circle K. At 9 that morning, customers can be seen entering and leaving the store, including this police officer. If only he had stayed a few more minutes. Moments later, this man enters, Joel McLean Carson. Within a minute, McLean shot and killed 24-year-old Ephraim Hernandez before turning his rage on the other people in the store. He said, this is not a game, this is not a joke, I don't want no money, don't want no beer. I came prepared to die. McLean then orders an employee to lock the front door before he barricades it with a donut case. Someone's inside telling him to lock the door and yelling at him, and it's happening pretty quick. Customers were then ordered to the back of the store with one man already dead. Security video catches the moment a customer fights McLean before all others join in. I'm not going to lie, I, put, I turned a gun to his stomach and I tried to pull the trigger. I, it was my only instinct to get myself out of the situation. With the store now empty, McLean appeared dazed and confused. After almost an hour, though, SWAT crews barreled in. McLean was shot once but survived. A year later, he is still awaiting trial, facing murder and assault charges, all as video of his disturbing crime spree becomes public. In Phoenix tonight, Ryan Sims, Arizona's family. Jumbo, jumbo. Here are some words of advice for anyone lucky enough to meet nurse Betty Schley. Do not tell her what she can and cannot do. I threatened my physician that did the surgery on me. I said, if I can't climb Kilimanjaro, I'm coming after you. This nurse of 40 decades is tough. Back surgery to her, no matter. A worldwide trek, no matter. Being 73, definitely no matter. There's nothing I can do about it. I'm going to get older, one year older every year. Betty knew she wanted to topple this mammoth mountain since she turned 70. A bucket list goal that turned into a Goliath exercise schedule. I would 
choose a distance, like say five miles or something, and I would try and cut down my time, go faster. It really was dedication for distance, lots and lots of distance. We're talking about an upward climb that lasted nonstop for 60 miles. But yet again, here we go. Jagged rocks, no matter to her. Jarring, freezing rain, no matter again. So much so that Betty rang in her 73rd birthday right here on the mountainside. How do you feel with the cake on the mountain? <laughs> mm, it's very good. Yeah. <laughs> After six days and 60 miles, success at the summit. A tremendous, tremendous triumph that wouldn't be complete, of course, without some tears. Just knowing that I did it was just, yeah. You proud of yourself? Yes, <laughs> very proud. So the takeaway here, no matter the challenge, the obstacles, the people who will tell you no, Betty is proof to go for it anyway. Crim 2 News at 4 o'clock starts now. Well, as you make your way through the Black Friday clouds, it's a mix of clouds and sun today, all as more rain is expected to roll in. Hey, happy Black Friday. Hope it's been a fun day. Hope you found some amazing bargains out there. I'm Ryan Sims. Good to be with you. On the topic of crime, this post that you see behind me on Facebook getting a lot of your attention this weekend. Everything you're about to hear came from these public documents I'm holding right here. These are live scenes from our affiliate station in Las Vegas. You'll notice that there is absolutely no traffic there on the strip. We are getting reports right now that there is an active shooter outside the Mandalay Bay Hotel. Despite all these air quality alerts and there are a lot of them today. There are still some people who are resolved to spend this holiday outdoors. Brave souls at that. We're so happy that they're okay. Has the sheriff's office said anything about the intensity of this rescue? Well, you know, it's not just soothing to the ears, but also calming to the soul. If you've ever had a bad, frustrating or sad day listening to one of your favorite songs can really be a pick me up, right? Yeah, we've been talking about the Zags. And we continue to talk about the Zags tonight. Our sports team is down in Boise. One word, absolutely freezing. Actually, that's two words, <laughs> and it is. Look at these temperatures right here. That's Sheriff Kyle Foreman, we appreciate your time. We know it's been quite the day out there. Uh, thank you for joining us by phone. And, of course, all of you watching, we will continue to have the latest on this Twitter, Facebook, creme.com uh, all night long. And we'll be right back after this.